Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Alt Billeron here in Farming Simulator 22 with me Siwari. It is the start of a lovely June morning here on the map. This is my first time playing on this map since the 1.2 game update came out. So I'm looking forward to seeing what changes that patch has for my experience. Um, I've already played on Elm Creek with the new new update and yeah, it's interesting. There's some new stuff we're going to have to get used to. But one of the things I'm looking forward to seeing today then is can I can I empty my silo here? Can I empty this of all the silage? Because last time we came to do the silage, you remember? We couldn't empty all the stuff out of it. Now, what else have we got? Let's have a look. We are down here. I'm just going to check the, check the statuses on everything. Good, good, good. Everything's growing. Soil composition. Yeah, we've got dead weeds everywhere. Needs rolling. Needs rolling. All my fields need rolling. You know, there's nothing I can really do about that, unfortunately. Um, they are what they are. Um, that's something that's going to need to be sorted out. I mean, to, to do the grass field, I've got to basically dig it all up again. I'm going to have to dig all the grass field up seed it reseed it re-roll it and that will remove the status all of these fields i can roll them after i've seeded them next time round um so yeah we have plenty of things to be getting on with uh i also need to very quickly i think Go and do some. Uh, ooh, reverse, 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 reverse. Now, I can't remember whether I did this in the last video or not, and whether you guys were here when I did it in the last video or not. You'll notice I have a large, a large amount of money sitting in my bank account. We have a large amount of money. Now, that is because I have taken, where's the money screen? The maximum loan I can take at the moment, which is 500,000. I've borrowed 500,000 pounds of the, the Queen's British pounds. I've borrowed 500,000. My reason for doing that is I'm not going to be leasing any more equipment because leasing costs are ridiculous, <laughs> you know? We've been saying that for so long now that leasing is just throwing money away. You're just wasting money. It's far better to take the loan, take the loan and then go and buy equipment and vehicles that you need. For your farm okay do anything we need now any equipment with the one exception being um i still can't i can't feel that good because i need to fill my greenhouses up because the greenhouses obviously got updated in the big 1.2 patch and they're a little bit they're a little bit more demanding now the greenhouses are or at least from my tests so far all my greenhouses seem to want to drink a heck of a lot more water produce a lot less fruit and make me a lot less money <laughs> so yeah the great nerf of the greenhouses has happened folks so I don't know. I don't know what the long-term plan is. I might end up selling my greenhouse. I might sell my greenhouse, folks. Um, 
because we already know greenhouses, you, you, you lose 40% of any potential income if you have them on selling. If you're not actually transporting the pallets yourself and selling the pallets yourself directly to sell points, um, you're losing 40% of the money you could be making. And now with the nerf that they have received, I'm just thinking to myself, it's probably not worth it in the long term to do um, greenhouses. At this point, with me lacking productions, with me lacking any all, all the other productions stuff, it's just not worth it. It's not worth the time to keep filling it up with water. <laughs> I'm going to get my silage today. Scooped up out of my bunker. Ready for the next um, grass mowing then later on in the year. And we'll see. This time we'll see. If we can get it all emptied. Now, of course, for me to empty this bunker, I am going to need something to load it into. So, why don't we take a quick trip to the store, everybody? Um, because obviously, one of my reasons for leasing, for taking the loan, having returned all my leased equipment, was so that I could buy another tractor for myself that we own and we therefore don't pay any kind of fees on so as i mentioned in the last video i was interested i was interested in adding a little bit of class to my farm say hello to my brand new class 870 axion tractor this replaces my New Holland. This replaces the New Holland that we had. I don't think it's quite as powerful as the New Holland. Um, but it falls into that area. It does have skinny tyres. So it won't do crop destruction when we're driving all over fields and stuff. But that'll be good. So we can still use it for fertilizing and everything down the road. So this definitely falls into the medium tractor category. And now what I can possibly look at doing is uh, getting myself a proper large tractor proper large tractor that we don't have to worry about being you know a jack of all trades uh, do you not want to pick that up are you going to be funny are you going to be funny about this game No, you finally did pick it up. Well done. Right, and we'll grab our we'll grab our little loading wagon thing. Here. Our our chickens are still laying eggs rather handsomely. And I'm so relieved on this map I have got the placeable sell point. <laughs> I am so relieved I have my placeable sell point. Um because obviously one of the things that has happened. Uh since the uh, update dropped is that um, pallets produced by chickens, sheep, productions are now much heavier than they used to be so you can't pick them up by hand anymore I think if um, I didn't have the placeable sell point um, I probably would have been selling my chickens <laughs> along with my greenhouses because I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be mucking about with pallet forks and stuff to um, shift um, to uh, shift the uh, materials. 
from the buildings. Again, once we get a proper proper auto load trailer, a proper auto loading system, hopefully Alpha Alpha comes good with his easy auto load system. And he brings that over. FS22. I won't download any of the the auto load stuff that's currently floating around on the internet because I just don't trust it. I don't trust the sources. I don't trust the websites. Um, and I don't trust the people who are making those mods. No offense to anybody if you're watching, but you know, there's a there's a there's a mod author who d does the auto load stuff, and quite frankly, like in him in him I trust. So I'm quite happy to wait for him to release the proper mod for the game. But thankfully, placeable cell point works really well. Placeable egg sales. And also, I think because it's Stevie's own egg sales and it's got Stevie's own price scaling, it's not affected by the nerf that giants have put on egg prices. Again, eggs is, was another thing that Giants massively nerfed in the game in this 1.2 update. So you don't make as much money from the chickens. Because literally everybody was saying, you want to get rich in farm sim, do greenhouses and do chickens. All the YouTubers, all the streamers, they were all just do eggs and just do eggs and greenhouses and you'll get mega rich. Well, giants do watch that stuff, you know. Giants do follow our content. So we have to be very careful as YouTubers and streamers what we post and put out there because uh, giants are like video and stream sniping. And um, if we, 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 we find stuff that works really, really well, um, they will nerf it. They will remove it from, from us. They will stop us from having fun and being able to enjoy our game. <laughs> You know, there are people at Giants who just sit there watching videos online and going, yep, yeah, that fella's having way too much fun. We need to break that. We need to fix that. We need to take that away. We need to release a patch which stops him from making money and being able to buy new fields, and new tractors and new equipment. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a new tractor. I bought it. I'm looking forward to using it. So it's the 1st of June. Summer is here. Everything's going reasonably well. I think. This. So far. The, the bunkers are emptying. So these are. The bunkers have apparently been fixed in the patch. So basically, I shouldn't have the I shouldn't run into the same problem as I had the first time we um, the first time we were loading all this stuff. Um, right, I'm just going to do something now, a bit different. I'm going to get a real good screenshot for my uh, video thumbnail. How's about that? Wopsters player action cam. Perfect for us streamers who don't want to use flight mode and enable all that stuff. I have removed the power tools mod from my mod list because I noticed that mod's been removed from Giants Mod Hub for whatever reason. And I was noticing a couple of things in my game that may have been conflicts caused by that mod. Like trying to do, um, trying to do, uh, use the lumberjack mod to do my strong arms. I was having issues not being able to actually enable that. Um, and I think power tools was conflicting because power tools has a option to enable disabled super strength. Um, so for the time being, I've, I've removed that mod. Like I say, I hope in time we will get a, or at least for me, I'll get an easy dev, easy dev commands mod, which would be much nicer. <laughs> so I can, uh, 
do my content using that. Certainly much easier using that mod than it is actually doing the console commands to manipulate stuff in the game. a little bit really am which may come as a big shock to people who've listened to my last few live streams because i know in my last few my last few live streams i've been a bit grumbly and a bit complaining about things um i think that's more than my multiplayer experience at the moment is not as enjoyable as it has been in the past um and that's no, 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 no disrespect. And I'm not being disrespectful of any players. I'm not complaining of any players. I'm not saying it's because of players that I'm playing with or anything like that. Far from it. The players that I play multiplayer with are fantastic players. They really are. They're a great bunch of people. And I love conversating with them when we're in game. And I love playing with them. It's just that my multiplayer experience I'm finding is kind of the same... It's a little bit like in FS19 when we tried playing with the Seasons mod. In that, it's very restrictive and it's very limiting on what you can do when you log into the game. You know, if you happen to log into the game at the wrong time of year, on the wrong day, it can be very, very bad. And so far, my experience of multiplayer has been that I've, lo I've logged in and played at the wrong times compared to other players. And other players have been enjoying doing all the fun things in the game. And all the fun activities like harvesting and stuff like that. And sorting out all the crops and selling stuff and all that good stuff. When I've logged into the game, the only thing I've had to do is plowing and cultivating. And... Specifically, ploughing and cultivating contracts. I ain't even been able to plough and cultivate my own fields, you know? Because the player, the other players have already done all that. So I've just been basically do, doing contracts one after another in multiplayer. And then I come into single player, like on this map or in my Elm Creek map. And I'm also doing contracts, you know, because we need to. In, the, in these games to earn money and to make progress whilst we're waiting for our fields to reach harvest stage we have to do contracts so at the moment my vanilla experience of farm sim 22 is that i'm just doing lots and lots of contracts all i'm getting to do is contracts and it's, it's sometimes that's not very fun you know that's why today, me coming on this map today, and I'm emptying this silage bunker. Oh my god, this is a complete breath of fresh air for me. This is something I don't get to do, or have not got to do very often in the game. Therefore, it's it's fun. <laughs> you know, now in, in 5,000 hours time, when I'm emptying and scooping silage out of a bunker, <laughs> somewhere on a map, maybe i won't say that this is quite as fun <laughs> but for now i am so relieved that i have this job to do because it means i don't have to do another contract today i don't have to look at the contract screen <laughs> you know i don't have to take a fucking cultivating contract or a plowing contract you know oh i get a rest <laughs> and i think and I was, and basically, I was discussing last night on on the stream, on my Twitch stream, that maybe for multiplayer in the future, after the current map, once we decide to move away from the current map, current save that we're on, when when eventually we reach that point where it's time to do something new, um, maybe I would set it up so it didn't have all the seasons stuff so the pl there was much more freedom for players to do what they want and hopefully far more variety for players to do what they want 
on the server. Don't get me wrong, I think season the season stuff is great, and I think it I think it works really well in single player because it does give you that story, it does give you that added narrative and that kind of like focus that you've got to work through a sequence of events and a period of time and you know it's a lot more natural and obviously more realistic i just don't think for me seasons ever works for me in multiplayer because i just like to log on to multiplayer and just do what i want you know that's the whole thing of streaming the whole my, my live streams are completely different from my let's plays um my let's plays like i say these are structured these have uh i have clear ideas of what i want to do today and what i want to do in my next couple of videos and stuff like that it's all planned out it's all you know you know as 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 a real farmer would plan out their their schedule their to-do list whereas in multiplayer i just log on to the multiplayer and it's a chance for me to unplug my brain for a couple of hours and just have fun with the game whilst streaming whilst entertaining everyone and but i'm not necessarily thinking so much and worrying so much about all the finer details of the game and all the technical aspects and all the you know all the stuff it's just a chance for me just to unwind after i've done you know a day's recording a day's let's play you know and um yeah i think i think for me certainly for me i think for me in future um my multiplayer servers probably won't have the seasons element um probably not the cer certainly not the crop cycle the crop calendar if you like the crop road i might st i'll still have probably the changing of the graphics so as you go through the calendar the map changes its appearance the trees the fields the bushes all that kind of stuff changes as you move through the calendar but you'll have the freedom to plant what you want when you want and harvest what you want when you want obviously when it's ready to be harvested um, and i think that just will be a little bit better for well certainly for me and maybe for other players as well who maybe also get a little bit fed up with just plowing and cultivating all the time you know one of the things that has surprised me a little bit is that with patch one point with the 1.2 patch update from giants and they've added all this extra stuff you have to do for fields now there's all these extra um steps you have to do to your fields stone picking rolling mulching you know to get the perfect yield and to get the 100 percent yield and everything i'm really surprised giants haven't added more of that into the contract system so there's actually contracts for those types of jobs you know a farmer will contact you asking you you know can you come and roll a field for me can you roll one of my fields can you collect stones on this field for me um I've got a grass field that's recently been mowed. Could you come and roll it for me and uh, get the grass growing again and get the grass to start, you know, regrowing? You know, these are all things that I think Field Giants have maybe missed, dropped a ball with. Because they could have added those into the game as well with this patch. And that would have given us a little bit more to do in the contract system. Especially why some contracts are still a little bit bugged and broken. Some of the harvesting contracts still not entirely 100% fixed in um, 1.2. Especially if you're still having to sell stuff off map at the train stations. Um, using the train stations, those missions are still not quite 100% working properly and can fail. To complete correctly. So, you know, my my harvest contract, how to fix broken harvest contracts video still applies for the time being. You know, it's still relevant to everybody, you know, but the people saying, oh, we won't need you don't need this video anymore. You should delete it. It's not quite true. 
Not quite true, folks. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I could explore the idea of getting myself a conveyor belt again, which would um, massively speed up the uh, the emptying and unloading of the sil silage pits. But you know what? You know what, folks? I'm happy to spend a day just doing some little manual pottering about work like this in my tractor because this is this can be just as relaxing as anything else if you're in the right mood for it you know i mean and it's not like as if i'm doing large scale silage production it's not like i've got you know, half a million litres of silage in a bunker to worry about. I mean, if you had that much, you probably would want to uh, maybe look at finding a better way of extracting it from the system. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do... <laughs> is I'm going to take this and empty it in my lovely little storage my little hayloft because obviously here in June there isn't probably going to be a great cry for silage we might as well save it till the winter should probably do as well at some point is take I, I well once I've emptied all the silage what I'll do is, as well is I'll take my um, ooh, flying in the air it's because the action camera mod is still in effect <laughs> can only change that from outside on foot, so unless I get out the tractor, I will uh, do anything about that. And then I have to use the mouse wheel to change the view height, <laughs> which means I'd have to reach to my desk and uh, use the mouse. And I, I, I want to avoid reaching for my desk at the moment because I've already had one accident today. Um, earlier on, I, I reached for something on my desk and happened to knock a full can of Coca-Cola off my desk onto the floor where it proceeded to explode Coke everywhere. So the floor under my feet is now very squidgy and soggy in coca-cola my pc which is sat under my desk in front of me is completely splattered up the sides with coca-cola so i'm gonna have to get the old glass cleaner out tomorrow and a cloth and i'm gonna have to clean my case off again because my case is tempered glass so i'm gonna have to give that a clean because my pc will be all sticky otherwise um and smelly and horrible Oh so yeah, not great. I need to avoid reaching on my desk for stuff. Because I knock stuff off. I'm very clumsy. Like I say, it was a full can of Coke that I'd only just opened, that I'd just brought upstairs with me because I'd just had my dinner. And I was, I think I was recording the No Man's Land video. And I, I think I reached for the keyboard because I, I wanted to tab back to the desktop so I could check the zip file to see if there was any like um, custom placeables or or maybe the collectibles see if the, they had a location list for the collectibles in the, the, the mod folder um, and um, yeah I ended up knocking the can off 
So, yeah. Not going to reach for my mouse <laughs> at this point in time. It's... Still plenty of silage in this bunker, though. I've been at this 30 minutes now, kids. This Massey makes some interesting sounds. And I've noticed, I've heard it as well on a couple of the John Deere tractors on my um, Elm Creek series. When it, when I hear it again, I'll point it out. It basically, it's a sound that basically, it sounds like I think some people have, um, have commented about it being like, um, sounds like a, an audio bug. And people have said, oh, it's something wrong with your audio settings. But it's not, it's in game. It's on certain tractors. When certain tractors are doing a certain thing, they make that noise. And as I say, when I hear it again, I'll point it out. build a bit new watch now because I'm waiting for this sound and I want it to make the sound it isn't going to do it there it is just heard it then don't know what that sound is but that's the sound that people are hearing and thinking is um, an audio settings issue it's not it's an actual vehicle sound I, I I wonder if it's something to do with the air consumer on the on on the, the on certain tractors that have an air consumer I wonder if it's basically refilling it's refilling and repumping air. It's definitely a mechanical noise. But it, it weird, it's weird that it seems to happen when your your vehicle's not doing anything. You know, you're not actually driving the motor. You're not driving the engine. You're not putting any load on it. And it seems like it seems like it's it's either recharging or refilling something to me. Possibly. Of course, we won't ever know because, unfortunately, giants don't actually enable don't enable the death meter and the air meters in game. They only enable the fuel, the normal diesel fuel. So we can see how much fuel our tractor has, but it, we can't see how much death and how much air our tractors have um, because obviously there's no way for us to manually refill those in game those they just refill automatically death gets refilled when you refuel 
and the air gets refilled every so every period every so often automatically by the tractor once it gets low. Um, but I would I wouldn't be too surprised if that noise I'm hearing is something to do with the air consumers on the um, tractor. There it is again. It is a bit. It's it's it, it's a bit like a, an idling an idling sound, but it's not the normal engine idling, unless it's in a certain gear. It only happens when the tractor's in a certain gear, maybe, which I have no control over because this is an automatic. <laughs> I only have the choice of drive, neutral, and reverse. This does take me back though. This takes me back to days working on the golf course. This does. <laughs> in topsoil. In topsoil. And um, um, sand. Sand for the bunkers. To refill bunkers. Uh, Getting topsoil which we then had kept fairly close um, at the far at the course because then want you know once a week want you know once a month or so um, someone would ground doing all the tea boxes filling in filling in all the divots on the tea boxes um, putting in a mixture of um, sand soil and seed um, to refill and repair the the, the tea boxes uh, where the golfers um obviously tee off from on every hole especially as our course our, our course our course was unique in that it was a nine hole course but it had 18 greens and 18 pin locations so every hole had like a separate flag had one flag one green and flag that you play to for the front nine and then on your back nine you play to a different green and flag but the, you teed off from the same place both times so our tee boxes got a lot of hammer our, our, our tees got really 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 hammered by players um so yeah they took they they were you know they, they we had to repair them quite a lot we had to go around filling up with you know topsoil root zone a lot of root zone as well putting down special root zone which is a special type of special type of soil that lets grass um seed and grow properly so we, yeah we used a lot of root zone as well on the tees we normally use root zone when we was constructing greens and building greens um, but we also used used it then on um on 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 the tees as well And we used a specially we spe used a specially treated grass seed, a specially treated grass seed which grew very quickly, which not only grew very thick uh, quickly but also grew very thick and very dense, because that obviously was very beneficial for on the tees, for you know providing protection and you know extra wear and tear proof. So you know we need stuff that would grow very quickly within a couple of days of it being put in the ground so that the tees actually looked nice and green rather than just being you know big sand covered mess <laughs> but yeah I, rem I remember I used to get that job I don't know whether it's because I was good at it or because the other blo person bloke I worked with just didn't want to do it and he felt it was kind of it was one of those jobs that was beneath him I think maybe that was probably more the case of it than me being good at it but yeah i used to remember having to go out load 
load up the. Uh, I had to load up the back of, um, yeah, uh, the, the little trailer. We had a little, we had like, oh, we had a gator. That's what we had. We had a gator, you know, like um, one of these things. We had one of these, and basically you'd fill the back up. We, but we had we had custom made extensions on the back, so we had big tall sides like a big box. So it was a real big box on the back, massive, and then we basically filled that with all the soil, all the root zone, the mixture, sand seed, uh, not, the, not the seed as such, because the seed we kept in a bag, we added seed by hand. So what I would do is when I got out to, once I got to the tin that I was going to be repairing, I had a, I basically, I had a plastic bucket, normal plastic bucket, um, which I would then put a, a, a shovel load of the root zone sand soil mix into. Um, I would then dive into my magic bag of grass seed and, and add a couple of um, handfuls of grass seed to the bucket. I would then mix it by hand and then I would basically walk around the tea box filling in all the divots via hand from the bucket and then once the bucket was empty it was back to the uh, back to the gator another shovel of the uh, sand soil and root zone mix and then um, another several handfuls of seed and then back to dispensing it via hand and then once I basically got the whole tea box covered <laughs> in the uh, mixture i would then use uh take a rake one of the normal rakes coarse rakes that you'd use for like raking the bunkers after you'd been in it um but i'd use the back of the rake i wouldn't use the spiky bit of the rake i'd use the back of the the, the rake head and i'd run that up and down the tea box basically level and smooth out all of the um the soil and stuff and make sure all the holes all the divots were filled in and the tea box was you know leveled off nice because you don't want and you don't want your tea box you don't want a tea box in golf to not be level you don't want to be teeing off and have the ball above your feet or below the feet below you negatively impacting your shot direction before you've even started i mean the idea of a tea box is that you have a perfect it's the only time on the whole on the whole that you get a perfect lie <laughs> okay or it's supposed to be the only time when you are on a hole that you get a perfect lie the minute you the minute you've teed off you then have to play the ball as you find it in whatever horrible condition and state it might be in but yeah i used to you know because i hated it as a player as a player i hated it when i went to other courses that had really bad tee boxes um you know, nothing worse than standing on a tee and having the ball being about a foot above your feet because they put the tee on a slope and you just stood there looking at it going, I know full well where this ball's going. This ball's going to go massively left because it's above my feet. <laughs> it's going to curve to the left, so I've got to aim way, way to the right. Not ideal. And... Um, so when I got back to my own course, of course, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, if I'm in charge of making sure the tee boxes are in good nick, in good condition, I'm doing it. I'm going to do a proper job of it. And I did, you know, I really did enjoy that. It's same with in the, in the summertime when it came to like water and greens and stuff, you know, I'd be out, I'd be out there all afternoon, you know, and I'd come back to the, I'd come back to the shop, the pro shop and the workshop and i'd be absolutely soaked because i'll have been out there i would have been using a hose pipe i'd been using the sprinklers <laughs> i'd be dodging in and out of the golfers <laughs> um, so yeah I'd, I'd i'd end up absolutely drenched <laughs> but you know when i was watering greens they were green <laughs> all year round when other people became responsible for it later on, not so good. 
You know, you, you get into you get into June or July, and all of a sudden the greens will start to look a little bit burnt out, a little bit dried out, and you'll be thinking, I thought so and so was supposed to be watering these now. Has so and so not been watering them? <laughs> and obviously, so and so haven't been watering them. He's been shirking his responsibilities, and yet, strangely, when it came to the crunch, it was me that got released by the course and so and so kept his job and I believe still works there to this day strange that innit someone who does a shit job gets to keep it and gets to carry on someone who can put in you know 78 70 hours a week did a real great job gets let go gets tossed to the curb Mm. There must have been more behind that. Must have been more in that. Right, we're full again. So I need to um Let's let's go back to normal height, shall we? Or as close to normal height as I could quickly get then. Right, another full load of silage. I mean, I'm not terribly fussed if I have to rip up my grass field again later in the year. Um, because I have, I, I know full well we have missed a spot. When we were seeding it first time, I did miss a spot on that field. So there is a bit on that field where grass doesn't grow at all. So maybe it will give me an opportunity to fix that before all the people with OCD start complaining massively. <laughs> there we go. That's probably now more back at proper height now. So anyway, folks, I'm going to go finish scooping out all of the silage that is in this bunker. And then when we come back for the next episode, we'll have a look and see what we're going to be doing next on the map and around the farm. Like I say, I have got 362,000 bucks now so there are options for us to buy things maybe including our first proper production building and especially as we're getting close to having wheat and barley available here on the map to harvest Maybe it's time I think about buying the grain mill so I can start producing flour. Hmm. Because flour is worth quite a bit of money, which we will look at in the next episode, everybody. But for now, thank you for watching today's episode here on Alt Villaro. <laughs> I'm still trying to do the accent. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> um, but yes, here on Hout Baileron, we have finished another episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please make sure you've clicked the like button for me. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have your notification bell enabled. That you've left your comments for me in the comment section down below. And uh, that you have shared this video with everyone you know. I've been Simone. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I will see you all again very, very soon.